Hello, everyone. My name is Dan Zitt, and welcome to Meet the Voice. Uh, I'm the Senior Vice President of Content Production for Pamela Random House Audio, and I'm also an executive producer. Uh, and over the last year, I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time with the gentleman I'm about to introduce you to, Philip Hernandez, who is an actor, musician, and is now an audiobook narrator. So, Philip, welcome to Meet the Voice. Thank you. Let's just start with telling us a little bit about your background as an actor and some of the things you've done in the past leading up to your audiobook work. Ah, oh, my least favorite subject, me. Well, uh, I started acting at a, you know, I guess a fairly young age in high school, and uh, then I went to college and got cast in a in a play, um, and just um, fell in love with it. I started in the regional theater, I guess, and then um, from there, uh, moved to uh, bigger stages um, internationally, um, Broadway, the West End. Um, did some high profile high profile shows. Um, uh, Les Mis, uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman, The Cape Man. Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've been around the block a little bit, um, very confident in my abilities as an actor, uh, but moving into audiobooks was uh, a whole new territory, and that's where you came in and really... Well, and there's something, I think, uh, and we've talked about this a lot as producers, there's a musicality to using your voice to record audiobooks as well, right? Um, have you had that experience in kind of your first uh, couple of audiobook titles, just to kind of using some of the tools you have as a singer and a musician. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, uh, the thing I like about audiobooks is that I could use all the, all the skills that I have as an actor and as a, as a musician um, in this area. So, uh, like, language is, 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 is very important to me. Um, I love language. I love good writing. And there's a, music, there's a musicality to language. Um, and so it's nice to get a sense of the author's voice and how, um, you know, not just what their intent is, but, you know, how they're saying it, you know, I mean, what's the, the quality of the language in terms of is it, is it, is it uh, florid or is it very direct and staccato or, you know, so you kind of, you know, get a handle on that. And also you shape the phrases that you would, um, you know, as you would in a piece of music. So let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. So you've done tons of theater and stage and screen and tons of music. And what brought you to this point where you were like, I really want to explore the audiobook medium and, and sound in this way? Well, I got really super lucky. Um, someone contacted my wife um, and um, said, uh, there's this um, mentorship program through Penguin Random House. And they're looking for um, audiobook narrators. And so I said, well, that's always something I was interested in, especially since it meant I could sit at home and I could read rather than having to memorize lines and then, you know, get up where, you know, thousands of dollars are being spent on every second. So this struck me as a way to go, hey, I could use all the skills that I already have. And I could do it from home and not have to travel. And so it had a lot of logistical, practical um, appeal to me. I said, yeah, I'll apply. What the heck? And so I did. And sure enough, I, I got it, which was great. And then I got to work with you. And that was amazing. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into it. And then I actually fell in love with the whole process. You know, you taught me that it's, that it's intimate, and, you know, even in acting on camera, it's, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. you're talking to one person, you know, but using your voice to create everything was uh, a very unique challenge that I just, I, I just dove into. Um, I, I, I felt that it was something that I was good at. I felt it was something that um, I could continue to learn in. Um, and it was just... Um, uh, it, it was kind of a match made in heaven for me. Yeah. Was there anything surprising to you about this work when you first started? Well, I'm very big as an actor and as an acting coach. I'm very big on simplicity. Um, and I was really surprised <laughs> that I was so over the top in the microphone. Yeah. And so I look back on it and I cringe. <laughs> you know, when yeah. I listen to it, I'm like, oh, my God. God, I'm so over the top. So it, it was really nice to 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 once you kind of settle in or once I kind of settled into this um, understanding that it was just me 
talking to someone else. You said uh, at one point, um, Phil, it's just like you're sitting down and you're having a conversation with your wife. And I went, oh, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah. Since we started working together, you recorded three books mm -hmm. at this point or parts of books. Right. Uh, first, tell us what that experience was like. And, and then, you know, tell us a little bit about those projects. Well, gosh, uh, I'm always prepared. I mean, I try to always be super prepared. So um, it was really just, okay, let's um, give it a whirl. Like um, this uh, one book, it's, it's, it's a wonderful book. I think E.G. Scott, I think is the author. Uh, it's called Rule of Three. I think it comes out in August sometime. Um, and I really enjoyed that because the character that I was playing is someone who's talked about through the entire novel. And then there's one chapter near the end where you actually hear his voice. And that was me. So, and he's not a very nice man. Um, and he's being interviewed. And so you hear his interview voice um, where he's like this, um, you know, self-help guru kind of guy. And then you hear his internal voice, which is what he's really thinking about what's happening. So that was really fun to be able to flip back and forth like that and just kind of walk the line, you know, it was great. You know, as an actor with a lot of experience, Philip, you know, what advice would you give for someone trying to break into the audio audiobook industry or just acting in general? Um, I, I think you have such a wealth of experience. It would be really great to hear your perspective on, on how someone can break in and or just anything you learned that you'd want to share. Trust your instincts. Um, <laughs> Uh, you got to go slow to finish fast. Linda Korn, thank you very much for that. Um, just enjoy the ride. And it's, it's just, you're talking to one person and you don't have to, it's not about your voice. God, I tell that to singers all the time because it's not about the voice. It's about the words and what you're saying and what the intent is. That's what communicates to people. Same thing with the mic. You know, you're on the microphone. It's like, it's just there. Ignore it. And then just zone in to what the author wants, you know, what they're trying to say, and you're the vehicle. Well, Philip Hernandez, it has been an honor to get to know you over the last year uh, and work closely with you. And, and uh, it, it just fills me with so much joy to see how you've evolved as an actor in the audiobook industry. And, and thank you for being on Meet the Voice with me. And I'm looking forward to the future. Well, thank you, Dan. I mean, I, I, I owe you a debt that I cannot ever fully repay because you have saved me so much time of trying to find my way in this industry. And thank you, sir. You are a gem. Thank you.